their connectors and builders and the gateway to many overseas basketball teams and leagues. But if you don't know what you should be looking for in a basketball agent, then it's going to be hard sailing for you to even get an agent who's going to help launch your career in the proper way. So today I'm going to show you these seven questions that you have to ask before you sign with the basketball agent. Let's begin. Colorado! Now, the first thing you have to look at when looking to sign with a basketball agent or agency is always what is the level of player that this agency or agent is looking to sign. Typically, agents or agencies will be looking to sign players of specific skill levels. So some agents will only be going for the NBA players. Some agents will be going for high major NCAA guys. Some agents will be going for beginners or rookies or lower level guys just to get started and get their foot in the door. Whatever it is, you have to tailor your search to the relevant skill level within that agency so if you're an nai guy or a juco guy and you're looking to sign with nba agents then you might as well be doing nothing at all because they're not even going to pay attention to anything you have to say instead you have to go through their website go through their client base go through uh, third-party websites such as maybe FIBA or Eurobasket or Hoops Agent. Any of these websites will show the clients that they're signing with. And you have to look for key things such as their age, their gender, their college experience, what leagues are they playing in. All of these things are going to help you tailor your search specifically to an agent. So you have to humble yourself in the first place. This is the first step. You have to humble yourself and understand okay, who are they signing? What is my experience? Where do I fit into there? Now, the second thing you have to look for when you're looking to sign with an agency or an agent is to ask yourself, do they work with only certain types of nationalities or certain types of players? So for instance, there are many, many agents in Europe who will only sign and work with what are known as Bozeman A and Bozeman B type of players or Kano 2 player. Now I've covered this in many other videos. I'll leave the links in the description below. But basically these types of players are going to be allowed many more opportunities in overseas basketball because there are certain roster spots that are designated for them in Europe. So agents obviously know this and they know that they're a huge commodity, especially if you're an American or a Canadian or you're coming from a high level type of basketball. And then you also have a passport that makes you eligible to be a Bozeman A or a Bozeman B or a Kano 2 player. So if you are one of these players who are eligible for one of these passports, then I would highly, highly recommend that you search out these type of agents because they will work specifically with these type of players and they will have the intel on stuff like roster regulations. And these things are changing every year. They'll know what teams are looking for, what type of player, what leagues permit these type of players, how many roster spots are available for them. All of these things are going to work in your favor if you work with an agent who works with specific type of nationalities. Now, the third question you have to ask yourself this is a very important one is the agent legally certified and when i say legally certified i'm speaking of are they legally certified by fiba do they have their fiba license id number now every fiba agent who is certified or who is approved by fiba they will have a license and id and they will be in the fiba database so if it, if the agent's not there chances are that they're not licensed by fiba now the big difference here is that if you are a certified agent under fiba there's a few things that can happen one you can be disbarred or reprimanded by fiba so there is a checks and balances there so that if they act unmorally then FIBA can punish them for that. But beyond that, if you have a FIBA certified agent, they can actually bring any type of dispute, any type of legal issue or a payment issue, a financial issue before what is known as BAT, the Basketball Arbitral Tribunal. And basically only FIBA certified agents can go before BAT and bring up an issue of payment or an illegal issue that has occurred between an overseas team and an overseas player. A street agent, even if they're representing you, even if they're your manager or whatever you want to call them they can't do that because they're not legally certified now another big benefit of having a FIBA certified agent is that they are never supposed to charge you an upfront fee a management fee or anything like that if they are representing you that is always supposed to come through the team that actually has agreed to the deal with you so for instance if you sign a contract in Colombia and you have a FIBA certified agent you are going to he's negotiating the contract for you with that team in Colombia they get a deal signed 
but the fee that's going to be paid to the agent actually comes through the team. Obviously, it depends on the situation and what they work out, but typically that's the range, like 5-10% of the monthly or it could be yearly salary. So they will never ask you to, for money to come out directly from your contract. Whereas if you are working with a street agent, there's really, it's no holds bar. They can ask you to maybe you pay an upfront fee. I've seen this before where they say, we'll represent you, but you have to pay $300 every year, or you have to pay a one-time fee of $300. And those agents can still get you jobs, but there's really no regulation for you pay $300 and maybe he doesn't get you anything. Maybe he's not working for you at all. Maybe he scams you. So the scam rate in these street agents is going to go up way higher versus a FIBA certified agent. Now, again, that isn't to say that there aren't crooked FIBA certified agents. There are crooked FIBA agents all over the place. Are you dealing with a FIBA certified agent or are you dealing with a street agent? Whatever it is, you have to do the risk reward benefit analysis in your mind. Do I trust this guy? What's he about? What's his history? What do past players say about him? and then make your decision. The fourth question you have to ask yourself is where is the agent located? Now this can have a huge influence on the agent's pull, their connections, their reputation. So if I were looking to sign in Mexico, then chances are I would go try and sign with a Mexican agent because they're gonna know how it moves there, who's connected, the team clubs and owners. He can build a personal relationship with these people. He can be there every day speaking with them. He can build rapport. So he's gonna be having his foot and his imprint in these leagues much more than say an agent who's gonna be across the water who's just sending an email out every morning hoping that someone responds to them. So that is why a lot of times people will sign with American agents, but they are just up and comers and they don't really have access to any of these. They're probably doing the same thing you're doing, just messaging teams on Eurobasket, going through social media feeds, going through word of mouth. So you have to know where is the agent located and how can he actually help me in this way? That's not to say that if you aren't located there that you can't have your tentacles or you can't have an influence in different parts of the world. There are many, many agencies who partner up for this very reason because they know that they can't be everywhere. So they have maybe a contact or a partner in another part of the world. They have another part of the world and they work together. They supply players to each other and then they'll cut the profit. So you have to understand how many parts of the world is your agent connected to? Does he have a partnership with some other agency? Now, the fifth question that I would ask myself is how many clients does this agent or agency have? But more important than that, where do you fit on that totem pole of where those clients are? So for instance, if an agency has about 30 clients and there's only one agent, let's say, and he has high NCAA D1 major guys there. And then you come in as a NAI guy or a JUCO guy and he signs you. Where do you think most of his attention will be? Just think about it. If you were an agent, who would you who would you want to spend more time with? The guy who's going to make earn you more money or the little guy who just came in from the NEI JUCO program? It's pretty obvious where he's going to devote his time. So for that, you have to understand where you fit on the totem pole. How many clients does he have and how much time will they actually dedicate to you in your career? I had an agency, a pretty decent agency in Argentina. They said that they would sign me after my rookie season. The only problem was that when I sent them the email to, okay, let's get going, let's sign it. It took them about two weeks or a bit more for them to even reply to that email. So I said, you know what, if it's taken them two weeks to even get the contract signed, you know, I'm at the bottom of the totem pole. These guys aren't even thinking about me. I'm just an afterthought to them. So I said, you know what, at that point, why even sign with them? Because it's going to give me some sense of false security. Like, oh, these guys are actually looking for jobs for me when really they, I may just be getting the table scraps at the end of the day. Now, the sixth question that I would ask myself when signing with an agent or agency, is the agent or the agency made up of former players or coaches in overseas basketball? Now, this can be a huge factor for a lot of players because if an agent has already played or coached across the world, guess what? They're going to have way more contacts than someone who's just starting out as an agent out of the blue and they just want to do it as a side hobby. They'll already know how overseas basketball works works. But more importantly, a former player or coach is going to have contacts, relationships, rapport built up over the years. So if you can sign with an agent who is a former player or a coach, 
That is something that I would highly recommend and highly consider. In FIBA basketball, to become an agent, literally anyone can become an agent. All you have to do is study for the test, pass the test, and knock it to Sparta, essentially. That means literally, if you work at McDonald's today, you can quit today, study, pass the test in Geneva or in Miami, and you're a basketball agent. Now, would that person have contacts? Would they have connections? Would they have relationships built up? Would they be an effective agent to start up? Chances are it would take years and years and years for them to even get their foot in the door for some teams or for some clubs, for some regions to even take them seriously. So for that, you can you can skip all of that if you sign with an agent who's already been a player or a coach. Now, the seventh and final question that I would ask is, is this their full time or is it a part time job? How serious and how dedicated are they to actually being an overseas basketball agent? A lot of people, just like with overseas basketball in general, a lot of people assume it is a full-time occupation. They aren't just full-time basketball agents. They'll have they'll wear many different hats. They may be a basketball coach on the side. They may be a broker and something else. They may be a teacher. They may be doing all types of things for multiple streams of income. Because basketball agents, just like in overseas basketball, a lot of the time it is very difficult to just live off of that by itself. So you have to have multiple streams of income. So for that, I always tell players that they have to ask themselves, how dedicated is this agent to actually being an agent? There was an agent who I worked with in Toronto and he always told me for years that he didn't consider himself an agent. He was a broker. He would broker deals in real estate, media and entertainment, basketball coaching contracts, basketball playing contracts for all types of different things. And basketball was just one slice of that pie. So you have to see how serious are they to actually being an agent. Now, some dead giveaways that you can have is if they put no effort into a professional website, if they don't have their own email address domain, if they're using like Gmail, Hotmail, outlook chances are they're not taking it that serious if they have no social media outlets or if they don't update them all of these signs is that they're probably not taking it too serious they probably have some other stream of income that they're doing now if you're asking me is that an agent even necessary to begin my overseas basketball career for a lot of players it's not a lot of players self-represent a lot of players get on through word of mouth a lot of players have done this throughout the years in overseas basketball but you have to know how the overseas basketball works if you don't want to go by an agent route or if you're not fortunate enough to have an agent who wants to represent you. A lot of players don't have that privilege. Now, if you're interested in that or if you're in that position, then go ahead and follow, like, and subscribe to this channel because I'll be covering all things about overseas basketball, how it works, how I got into it, how I've helped other players throughout the years get on all throughout the world. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you have any questions, drop them in the section below. But for now, take care, guys. Thanks so much for watching. God bless. Peace.